Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here. So in this video we're going to unbox this pile of folders. So my friend at work uh, put this pile in my mailbox. So apparently this pile consists of college algebra tests uh, from the spring of 92, trig and pre-calc from the fall of 1992, calculus 1 from the spring of 1993, and Calculus 3 from the summer of 1994. So how interesting it will be, I am not sure yet. Uh, let's take a look inside. Okay, so this is College Algebra. This is supposed to be the first folder. Uh, this is Exam 1. So Exam 1 in College Algebra. So it looks like just some basic simplification here, nothing too, too fancy. Then we have another one here. It looks like we have to rationalize. So kind of a a little bit harder. Some basic simplification, factoring, right, just basic algebra, factor by grouping, more factoring, uh, more factoring, <laughs> more factoring, quite a, a lot of factoring. Let's keep going and look through this a little bit more. So we have more solving equations, okay, some inequalities, Nothing too special, right? Yeah, some more inequalities. A word problem. Okay, here we go. Not, not too difficult. What is this? The diameter of, whoa, of a cylindrical propane tank is 4 feet. The total volume, including hemispherical ends, is 152 pi over 3 cubic feet. Find the total length of the tank. So, wow, so you have to know some stuff uh, to do this problem. I guess they give you the formulas, so it's a little bit easier, but still requires some work. Oh, wow. Derive the quadratic equation. So uh, that was uh, a question, apparently, on his test. So kind of interesting. Let's keep going. So I skipped ahead a little bit to exam four, because I figured exam four might be a little more interesting. So looks like it's on logarithms. So just some basic questions with logs some simplification, so still very similar to what we do uh, today in college algebra. Some condensing, right, writing it as a single logarithm. Let's turn the page, see what else we got. Some more properties of logs, giving the exact value. Some logarithmic equations. Looks like it did pretty good on this test. Okay, let's keep going. This is, I think this is the answers to the test. Yeah, this must be, this must be the, the teacher's solutions, okay? So we have a word problem, another word problem, another word problem, and a little proof. Wow, there's a proof. That's great. And he got it right. Yeah, he's, he's a smart guy. I think he got a good grade on this one. Yeah, highest grade in the class. Awesome. Awesome. Just really, really good. So that was the college algebra folder. It looks like there's a final exam here. Oh, we have to look. Let's look. So simplify. Simplify. Oh, we got a 96 in the final. We have an equation. An inequality. Center radius. Function composition. So far, all very, very standard type stuff, right? Again, so very similar to what we do uh, today in college algebra. Finding the domain of some functions. Finding a polynomial. Okay. Express in standard form. And then I, I can't read what that says. Oh, name and graph. Okay, wow, hyperbolas. So so they were doing hyperbolas in college algebra apparently in the 90s. Interesting. So that's a topic uh, that's typically done in pre calc now. And I guess this is his scratch work. I'm not sure what that is. Solve for x. Some more logarithmic stuff. And what's this? Oh, this is a word problem down here. Okay, so then not so bad. So the final wasn't uh, too bad. So overall, uh, it looks like uh, college algebra um, is a little bit harder. Okay, so let's go to the second folder now. Um, I have not opened this yet either. And this folder is pre-calculus. It says pre-calculus homework. So it looks like we have some papers here, some sine functions. Some folded papers here. It's probably just homework. Here's the first test. 
let's let's skip ahead to like a future test. So let's see, that's exam one. I'll try to keep these in order for my friend. Exam two. Let's see if I can find another test that's a little bit further ahead. Here we go. Exam four. Exam exam four pre-calculus. So let's see, determine the angle theta in quadrant two, such that sine of theta is three over seven. Okay. All right, then we have some other questions here. Wow, wow, so this is this is interesting. So it's pre-calculus and they're doing trig. So I guess back then um, they did trig in the pre-calculus course. There was no trig course. Pre-calculus was just like pre-calculus and trig. So it was like both... Uh, combined. This is pretty hardcore uh, for a pre-calc class because for one it has trig in it and honestly the questions I mean they may not be super hard uh, but it is quite a bit. So I guess that's the whole that's the whole fourth test and so yeah. So again I, I think I'm gonna have to think that this is a little bit harder than what's being taught today so uh, a little bit more rigorous. Let's go ahead and look at the next folder. All right, if you're still with me, here's the next folder. I think that's Calc 1. So let's, let's look in here. Whoa. Whoa, infinite series in Calc 1? <laughs> so that's typically done uh, in Calculus 2. Look at this table. Wow, it's like a handwritten table of formulas. Um, you definitely don't see that anymore uh, today. So let's go through it. Let's just go ahead and look at the first test. So Calc 1, the first test is typically on limits. So find the indicated limit, then use the formal, okay, wow. So the very first question on the test is a delta epsilon proof or epsilon delta proof uh, right away. So like no warm up, um, just number one, your first experience in Calc 1, give me a proof. <laughs> you have a little problem here. So I know that's still like in the homework problems I assign, we still have stuff like this. Some limits. Yep, that one I figured would cause a problem, and it did for my poor friend. Let's go to the next page. So we have another limit. Wow. Wow. Yeah, pretty significant here. So I would say it's definitely not an easy test. It's not the hardest, but it's certainly not, not an easy test. Look at this one. Cosecant of pi x over 3. What does the question say? Find the discontinuities. Okay, that's not so bad, but that does take a little bit of work there. That condition there is a little bit frightening. Let's turn the page. And that's it, that was the first test. Um, I'm gonna keep going, this is kind of interesting. Let's look at the second test. Find the derivative using only the definition of the derivative. Okay, so we have that one. One over the square root of x minus three. So it's not just a square root function, it's one over the square root. And this is the this is the first question on the test. Like it's number one. There's no warm up. There's no like easy stuff to help you relax. It's just go use the definition right away. Then number two is a word problem. Wow. Now it's not a hard word problem, but like it's on that first page. Three is a little bit better. That's pretty easy. It's a tangent line. Let's keep going. This is a lot more interesting to me than the uh, college algebra folder. Find the derivative. That's kind of cute. Some derivatives here. Interesting. Find the, I think that's the, the second derivative. Yeah, second derivative. Some implicit differentiation problems. That's an easy one. Tangent line and the normal line. I forgot to do that. Some related rates with the sphere. Very standard calculus problem. It's good to see that. That has survived the test of time. We still do that today. Something with an angle here, another problem, and then another word problem, and then a balloon problem. Wow, so pretty tough test. Let's go ahead and look at the third test. I'm really curious. I was just gonna do like one test, but this is this is too interesting. For the function x cubed minus 12x, find the absolute and relative extreme values. Write none if none exist. Okay. All right, so that's quite interesting. That's number one. So, you know, it's a lot of thought right when you sit down. You do have to really think and 
usually uh, I like to put something you know easy on a test on the first page, like the first problem at least, to help people relax. Mean value theorem problem. Mm, this is nice. They're making him explain. All right, they're making him explain. That's very, very good. Let's turn the page. It's going to just keep going through it in one uh, motion without stopping the video. Let's see here. What's this? The function at g is continuous on negative 2, 1, and differentiable on... Okay, so it's a mean value theorem problem. Another one here with an explanation, right? Requiring an explanation. Some more conceptual stuff. Construct a function f. Wow. Another mean value theorem problem. Some asymptotes. This is a pretty tough test. This one wants a graph. I guess my friend didn't do it. <laughs> um, compute the limits. Yeah, pretty tough stuff. And I hope that's it. No, no, there's, a, there's another page. There, there's more here. An open storage bin with square base. Okay, a word problem. And then another word problem. Very tough test. Very, very tough. This is calculus one, uh, exam three. He didn't do as well on this one, but I mean, Honestly, you know, I can't blame the guy. That was a pretty, pretty tough test. He's actually a really smart guy. Um, calc 1, exam 4. Use Newton's method to approximate a zero. Wow, okay. That's pretty good. Another Newton's method problem with a tangent function. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. I mean, just great. Already, the difficulty, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Simpson's rule. Wow. Wow. On, on the second page, you got to use Simpson's rule. I know people who, uh, at certain schools, uh, there's people who don't even teach Simpson's rule. Like it's it's a skipped topic. Um, now it's on this test. I usually cover it, but I, I personally don't don't test on it. Trapezoid rule. There it is again. So something else that's often overlooked uh, nowadays. Find each family of antiderivatives. I love how that question is worded. Um, it's just it's just so old school, you know. Not just like find the find the integral, no, find the family of antiderivatives. Notice the really poor typesetting, the little tiny integral sign. Lots of integrals. Fundamental theorem of calculus to find an area. So far, this one's not so bad, actually. Yeah, this one's not so bad. I think this test was a little bit easier than the other ones. Oh wow, exam five. So there's there's a fifth exam. So, let's look at this one. Find dy dx. So some derivatives here. Pretty interesting. Some more derivatives. Quite a few, actually. Quite a few derivatives. Ooh, x to the x. That's a fun one. I like that. 2x to the 3x minus 2. That's cool. Some integrals. Not so bad. That one's kind of annoying. You have to use um, synthetic division or long division for that one, which he used synthetic for. Pretty good. <laughs> Just left it blank. I shouldn't laugh. That's. I can see that. Uh, yeah, being problematic. That's a nice one. Yeah, should have made the u substitution there. That's where. That's where the one half comes from. Nice little problem. Some definite integrals. Quite a long test, right? Quite a, a, a bite of work. And there's still another page, right? There's still another page here. Find the area. There's a. There's a word problem here. And then there's another word problem um, here. So this is a really interesting folder. I think so far this is my favorite. What's this? Oh, there's an extra credit question, EC. So regarding a projectile and then something here. So wow, that was that was an experience. Uh, I'm really glad um, I looked at that folder. So that was the, that was the calculus folder. Um, really, really interesting. Uh, much, much harder uh, than um, most most calculus classes. My calculus class is pretty tough, like, uh, but this one had some stuff that I don't normally do. Now that being said, I do do some stuff that's harder that is not in these uh, in these tests. So I'm gonna stop the video and let's go to the next folder. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go through this last folder. So nothing here so far. Let's see what this is. We have some just some integrals, so nothing uh, fancy here. Integration by parts, right? so regular standard stuff. Right? So let me uh, close this. 
So we have some vector stuff. Looks like this is Calculus 3. Is there a name on the folder? Let's, let's see. Yeah, Calc 3. Yeah, this is Calc 3. So you have some Calculus 3 here. Let's, let's go further into it. Let me just skip some pages here and we'll, we'll focus on one. So more Calc 3. Let's see if we can get further in. So what's this? 14.5. Let's look at this. So it looks like we have some chain rule stuff. So Calc 3 chain rule. Okay, so stuff that we still do today. So, so far, um, everything here looks pretty standard. I'm not seeing any tests here, though. This is just like homework questions. Um, so nothing really uh, different. More Calc 3 stuff. All right, more Calc 3 stuff here. Some more, more stuff here. Vector valued functions. Way deeper into Calc 3. Uh, looks like we have, oh, Lagrange multipliers. That's what this looks like. Yeah. Yeah, we have to maximize something according to a constraint. So it looks like uh, he's doing Lagrange multipliers. Yeah, it's a good topic. I, I just taught that uh, last uh, last summer. Yeah, it's pretty good. Actually, no, he's using the uh, second partials test here, right? So yeah, right, he's using the second partials test in that case. Just maximization, minimization problems. There, there's the Lagrange multipliers. There's you see that that vector equation that you use for Lagrange multipliers. Skip ahead. And that's it. So overall, um, really interesting stuff. I, I personally found this enlightening, at least I did. Um, I do think that the calc 1 and the pre-calc and the calc was uh, quite challenging. So interesting look into the past. Uh, handwritten tests, uh, really old school. That's it. Thanks for watching.